Okay, people. You see, the Bible says God is not the author of confusion. He's not. You know, the more you start studying outside this Bible, the more you start getting confused. Flip-flopping, not knowing what to believe, not knowing. When a, a car, I got a coworker of mine. He got he got a saying that he said he's an old school cat. And uh, every time you see me at work, tell me something good and stick to it. Did you hear what I just said? Tell me something good and stick to it. Stop changing. I'm trying to find myself. Make up your mind. What is it? Every time you find a new doctrine, then after, guess what? The devil going to throw you another one. Try this one. And this one going to start... Now all you can say, if I read the Bible, I read it. It's on the back of the shelf now. You started with it, now it's at the bottom of the shelf. You didn't replace the Bible with other books. You got a library. And the Bible is buried. I went to a person's house who said she started off, she's a Jew. Worked for the Israeli, Israeli army. She said she took up, what shit did she take up in school? Something to do with, I think, psychology. But she said she'd been to different nations and now she saw their other gods and she believed in other ways and this and that. But yet at the same time, when I walk in your house, you got the Jewish custom of the candlesticks. You, you're operating the Passover. You said you don't uh, work on the Sabbath because you live by the God. But that's what you told us when we tried to do an estimate on your house on a Saturday. Then when I talk to you and ask you about it, where there are other ways. So I'm like, what are you? You understand? That's confusing to me. What are you? You're doing the Passover this week. Then what you're doing next week? You're confusing me. I go to your house. I see the Lord's Supper. I see a picture of Noah's Ark. I see the Ten Commandments. Then I see this. Then I see that. And I see all this other stuff. I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> God is not the author of confusion. We create in ourselves confusion. You understand? You know, I've been there, people. I've been at that research phase. I've been there. I've been there. I've been... Oh, I'm finished with the Bible now. I done read it twice, so that's all I need to know. Let me put it over there. What else they got? It's the book of Enoch. Let me try that. Oh, it's the book of the dead. Let me try to research the book of the dead. Let me. What's up with Buddhism? Is that a Quran? Let me see. It's got to be some missing pieces in here somewhere. And then I get further and further away from the piece. And then I spend so much time on YouTube trying to. Research the reptilians and and Anaki and all this other stuff and I'm, I was just going crazy. I was getting crazy. I ain't get back sane till I got back to the basic. You see, I may not know as much as you know about the Egyptian ways. Great, <laughs> great. <laughs> I'm glad I don't know. I know who called me out of the darkness into his marvelous light. You see, a lot of y'all ain't had that spiritual awakening yet with the Lord. Oh, I believe in Jesus. If you believe in Jesus and you had a real spiritual awakening, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Listen closely. If you believe in Jesus, you had a spiritual awakening, you would denounce 
your detestable things. Now, I'm, I'm talking about God worship right now. Anything that's against God, like paganism. If you really believe in Jesus Christ and you believe in his teachings, you denounce the works of darkness. You wouldn't lean on them. You wouldn't even want to go to a store and be like, I, I like that Egyptian uh, decor. I'm going to put it in my house. That's my ancestry. You wouldn't be having dream catchers in your house. You wouldn't be pouring salt, salt around your doorsteps. You wouldn't be burning sage to exercise demons. You wouldn't be drawing pentagrams and circles and symbols if you had really been touched by God. Now, let me tell you a scary verse. Many are called, few are chosen. Now, let's go back to Solomon. He said, Solomon is going to do everything I want him to do. But there's something left out. Solomon is going to do everything I want him to do. But Solomon is also going to do some things I don't want him to do. He's going to turn away from me. But before he turn away from me, He's going to do what I told him to do. Don't be one of those people that started off doing what God told you to do and end up doing what you want to do. Dangerous, ain't it? Called and chosen. And he warns Solomon constantly. How many warnings you get? And he warned a lot of us constantly. In the form of me, in the form of somebody else. I was talking to somebody the other day. As long as they believe in the Lord, who is Lord to you? What about the little kids? There's a loophole to that. He said, I will pour out my spirit. When did he pour out his spirit? I'm going to ask you a question now. According to the Bible. When did God pour out his spirit on the whole world? When Jesus died and gave up the ghost on the cross, he poured out his spirit into all the whole world. And he put his laws and commandments in the hearts of men and women. So your children ain't got to get out of jail free card. They don't. I was looking at a video the other day about a young boy from the age of like seven. He's had a, a mugshot. And they just, they were just going through different mugshots. But from the age of seven, I didn't finish the whole video, so I don't know if they start changing until he was converted or changed. But from the age of seven, he basically started his criminal record. To know right from wrong. And I am guarantee you, if you're a child, you didn't have somebody to tell you, hey, don't do that. Even if your parents are teaching you wrong, you would have had somebody in your life, God placed there, to tell you right from wrong. But you know it already. But it's for somebody to confirm that what you're doing is wrong. It goes for me and anybody else. You see, and that seven-year-old, I wish I would have watched the whole video. I wish I would have saw towards the end that he was a different person. But I don't know. I'm just saying, age ain't nothing but a number. You remember when the kids were slew with for making fun of Elijah? Bald head, bald head. You think all tears are innocent? I don't believe that. Once the child start walking and start talking, 
and start doing things, you better take notice. <laughs> or you can let it go. You can let it slide. You understand? I'm, I was a shelter boy. My mom had seven kids. I'm the youngest of seven. And through trials and tribulations, my mom got strict with me and kept me in the house. She was more strict than me. Everybody was like, you're the baby, you got away with a lot of things. I didn't do a lot of things to get away with a lot of things. I couldn't do any things. You understand? I had to stay at the house. And then when I joined the military, I went out and I started doing my own thing. I, I had my prodigal son moment to a certain age range. You understand? And I found God again. I found him. Or he found me. But it's up to you to find him. Not find God's. Because once you go out in the world, you're going to realize, but all his true children are going to come home. No matter what they're doing now. If they're a murderer, a thief, a killer, a homosexual, transgender. If they he is, he is. I just saw a transgender go all the way through the whole process. And then turn their life back over to God. Glory be to God. I done read testimony of witches doing witchcraft. Then they turn their lives over to God. I don't give up on people. Because God never gave up on me. I'm not going to stop pushing this issue to you. It's part of my job. What he told Ezekiel? Tell people what I tell you to tell them. If the Holy Spirit dwells in you, say what the Holy Spirit tells you to say. You understand? You can say, you can't say nobody. He said, those who turn a sinner from the error of his ways can have saved a soul. You, you lead them to God. You can save them. Not you, he will save them. You lead them to God, he will save them. You know, I try to ask people why certain people stay in my life. So I'm like, man, it's never going to happen. A part of me like that, but I, I got to change that way of thinking. Like, why? Houston, I never gave up on you. When I saw you going on the dark way, I called you and you answered. And I'm going to be with you. As long as you stay seeking me. But I can put this Bible down one day. I can just say you forget it. Stop doing videos. Stop living for God. And don't spread his word no more. And start living how I want. I can. But I don't want to. And the only way I stay in it. Is I keep praying to him. Like I was talking to somebody. He was like why does God allow certain things to go on. I just told you the stories. I just told you. From Judges. This has been prophesied since the beginning. Moses prophesied this, that the people will turn from you. It's been prophesied since the beginning. And guess what else has been prophesied since the beginning? There was going to be a savior since the beginning. If you love Jesus, love his father. Do you understand? I'm so I was trying to find a verse. You know, every blasphemy and sin will be forgiven. You know what I'm saying? It's still blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. He said you can even curse God and be forgiven. You can even talk bad on Jesus Christ. But he said blaspheming against the Holy Spirit. And that's so scary because I don't even know what that means. <laughs> whole, whole, I done read it a thousand times. You understand? But all I know is a lot of, before they was calling Jesus evil and not believing in him. So it has to do with something with not believing. You understand? Wholeheartedly. There's got to be something. Or even never receiving the Holy Spirit. But one day God's going to give me the answer to that and I'm going to be able to put, say it to you so clear. But I'm glad I don't know what it truly means for real. You know why? Because I'm scared to make that mistake. To blaspheme 
the Holy Ghost. You understand? Maybe God stopped me before I reached that point and said, here go my words. And told me, hey, stick to it. And I think a lot of, I'm telling you people, man, just because I became a follower of Christ, I believe every sin that I commit is forgiven. But I believe everything that I have done in my life, I've had to repay for. I had to go through some things because of what I've done. So I'm, I'm cool with that. It ain't a man or woman of God alive that ain't got to reap consequences because whom the Lord loves, he chastises. I had to realize this how I was somebody else doing me the same way and then take it and be like Lord why am I going through this you know why you're going through this boy how does it feel how does it feel to be no you were like that <laughs> You understand? True repentance, you got to realize the error and not do it again. Like if you've been cheated on and it hurts your heart and your soul, let's say husbands and wives, if you've been commit, had the act of adultery com committed on you, why would you do it to somebody else? If you lost a son to murder, why murder somebody else's son? If you've been lied to your whole life, of you, why lie to other people? So sometimes you got to go through it and experience it. You know, people, today is the day the Lord has made. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, I come to you today in earnest prayer today, Lord Jesus. I ask you to touch the person at the end of this Video, Lord Jesus, just touch them in a very special way. Whatever needs to be cleansed in them and whatever needs to be cleansed in me, Lord Jesus, ask you to cleanse us today. Ask you to keep us aligned with your truth. That is the only truth. That is the Holy Bible. And if anybody at the sound of my voice is searching for answers outside your book, Lord Jesus, send your Holy Spirit to comfort them, to teach them the right way, to bring things into remembrance that they need to know. Not things that they don't need to know that are irrelevant. In Jesus' name we pray. Keep your children from idols and false god worship and sorcery and witchcraft and hoodoo and voodoo. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. People accept the Lord. If you haven't accepted the Lord in your life, it's easy. Believe that he died on the cross for your sins or resurrected and sit at the most high seat, right hand of God. Get baptized by the water and ask for the Lord to overflow you with the Holy Spirit because you need all three. And ask Lord, the Lord to keep you on the right path and tell, him, tell you what you need to be doing for him because your mission is not the same as mine. He has a mission for you. There are gifts in you that you already have that you're using for the wrong purpose. And that gift was given to you by God. What are you going to do? You understand? I know it's so many different. You got science. You got this. You got that. You got all so much stuff going on. I'm sorry. It's a snare. But if you are his, you will make it out. You will escape the snare. You will escape the bear trap. Get out the trap. One thing about a trap, it normally involves tricks. Don't let the enemy trick you into his trap. Have a blessed day. Have a great weekend, a great whatever going on with suffering, with pain, with joy. Yes, the righteous will suffer. You're going to feel a lot of pain once you start living for God. Because you're going to feel the pain of others. And you're going to want to save or lead them to the one who saved. Please stay focused. Have a blessed day.